Well, welcome everyone to another edition of the um, Between the Pipes podcast with myself, Chad Schneider, and my co-host, Cam um, Muir. However, uh, Cam cannot be with us tonight. He apparently got some free tickets to the Ottawa Senators game. So he chose that over doing this podcast with me. And I am a little bit hurt by that, but I totally understand, uh, you know, going to the Senators game go over doing a podcast with me would be a little bit higher on his on his list however you know what i guess if that's the only way the ottawa centers can get fans in the seats is by giving away free tickets then it is what it is so without further ado um this is motherhood and broomball podcast and we're going to speak with chloe payen and nicole lens Lens link. Okay, I probably got those completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure they can uh, um, correct me later on in the podcast. So, in 1992, the government of Canada uh, designated October as Women's History Month, ma- marking it the beginning of an annual l- month long celebration of the outstanding achievements of women throughout Canada's history. In so, we are highlighting women in our wonderful sport of broomball through this podcast segment with the topic of juggling motherhood while also playing the sport of broomball. Okay, so um, I am going to go and uh, grab the guests from the waiting room, and then we're going to do some introductions. All right. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Nicole's back. Okay, Chloe's in. Awesome. All right, ladies. Thank you so much for joining me and Cam tonight on our podcast. Like I had said earlier, Cam can't be with us. He went to the Senators game. <laughs> he picked that over hanging out with us, which I thought was a little rude, but that's his <laughs> call. Right? So... It is motherhood and broomball. It October is Women's History Month, and with doing that, we're going to talk about the juggling of motherhood while playing the sport we love, broomball. So, with us tonight, we have Chloe Payen. Correct. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, former goaltender for the Dynamites from the province of Quebec, and now defenseman at the intermediate level. And also we have Nicole Lenslink. Lenslink, yeah, pretty close. Lenslink, yeah, it's close, <laughs> eh, from the province of Ontario, who is the assistant captain of the women's elite team, the Spades. Mm-hmm. Okay, right on. So, thank you very much for joining us today, taking the time out of your busy schedules as mothers to come and do this podcast with us. Unlike Cam, who decided to go to the center. <laughs> and I'm going to do this all podcast, Cam. Believe, it or not, believe me. <laughs> all right. So, as I'm sure, you, I don't know if you guys have watched our podcast at all or seen a couple of them at all or not, but we, we typically have some, some token questions that we always ask everyone. Uh, usually the first one that we ask and then the last one at the end. But so, first off, what we do is we kind of take turns, right? So it's just me tonight. So I'll be asking all the questions. Um, I'm going to let you guys do most of the talking. I'll just do some because I like to talk too. And <laughs> we'll go from there. So we'll start with Nicole. Okay. Um, how did your broomball career start? Uh, well, my career started when I was seven years old. Uh, I started playing with my younger sister, Brittany. She was six at the time. Uh, we had the joys of playing broomball wearing water shoes inside of our broomball shoes because they didn't make equipment small enough for us and we were quite petite. Uh, so that is a huge memory I have growing up as a young broomball player. Um, yeah, so we, we started in Pee Wee and then we always look forward to going to Barry for our provincials. We had our parents coaching us at one point um, and a couple years into our my career, uh, my two Younger sisters than Brittany, so Stephanie and Tiffany also joined um, and playing uh, when they were 
of age, which now is not as particular, but they were pretty particular when we started. Um, so that's when it's, that's how I started my career. And then I started playing at the senior level when I was 14 years old. Um, I was quite young to be starting in that. And now it's actually, there's an age limit to be starting or playing in our senior um, league. So it's cool to know that I was kind of one of the younger ones that had that privilege. Uh, so I played, it would have been, I guess, at, at our time, midget as well as senior. Um, and then I played my Terminator year, uh, or sorry, my juvenile year as a Terminator player. Um, and uh, we, we went to our first nationals in 2011, which was pretty great. I played with my sisters and my cousins. So it's a big family thing uh, that we do. Broomball is huge in, in my family. Um, and then from there, my career just kind of took off in Broomball. I played a few with a few different elite teams. Um, Back in the day, they were called the Crushers. They weren't a team for very long, but that's where I started my elite level. And then played Rebels and OSS and Vipers. And then most recently, I actually had the privilege of joining Saskatchewan last year for the when they pick a player to join the team. So that was kind of cool. And then in 2017, um, my sisters and I actually started our own team called the Spades. Um, so that was about five years ago. We started in the intermediate division and we won our provincials two years in a row, which then uh, qualified us for elite. And we've now been competing at the elite level. And when we started our team, we were focusing on trying to introduce new people to the sport of broomball. So majority of our team were soccer players, baseball players, whomever we kind of were connected with outside of broomball. And we've been very successful since with that kind of squad. And we continue to still bring in new people every year. So that's kind of where I'm at in my career. Still love it. Um, it's my family away from my family. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's my little uh, career in a nutshell. I've been playing for a very long time. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. That that is absolutely fantastic. So, I guess Ontario. What part of Ontario did you play in? Like what part? Like you said, the Terminators, right? Yeah. So we're out of Palmerston, which is Central right. West. If Central you're more West. familiar with the region so central yeah. west is where we come from so yeah okay awesome <laughs> well thank you it sounds like uh i love the fact that you're grabbing other athletes from other sports and bringing them over that's fantastic yeah that I was wish, kind of uh, the goal do you want to move to saskatchewan and then bring that same same strategy <laughs> because uh, we're, we're trying it's just it's we're... well saskatchewan tried to twist my arm a little bit last year yeah. to see if i would move to saskatchewan yeah see there you <laughs> but, go but uh that's a it'd be a hard to move for me i think <laughs> okay chloe how about you how did your broomball career start well first of all i want to say i'm so glad that nicole is doing this with me because one of the big questions I've always asked is how many of you are there? Because there were so many with the same last name <laughs> and they're all so good that oh, I kept on you. thinking, I mean, not another one. I mean, as a goaltender, you try to um, pick, I guess, you know, try to have a good um, idea of who you're playing against. And it just felt like every year there was, there was more of them <laughs> coming in and they were just as good and so now I have a better um portrait of the family and I think this is really cool um but yeah on my side so in Quebec it's a little different I guess also it, it's it's not as organized as it is in Ontario although um it's we still have a good pool of players if you definitely compare to um the west i, I we can't complain yep. um but it's not we definitely don't have all the levels just like hockey would have so it's it's definitely different but um i've always wanted to play hockey and my mom did not want me to play hockey because she felt like it wasn't safe um so that was 25 years ago uh and um then someone at school told me who was way older. Um, she was uh, the sister of a uh, friend of my brother's. She said, well, I play broomball if ever you want to try. I had no idea what that was. I was maybe nine at that point. I said, hmm, sure, if I can be on the ice, I'm, I'm here for it. And my mom let me because she had no clue what this was all about. So uh, <laughs> I ended up joining for a practice and I was hooked. And as the youngest player, um, for my school at that point, they decided to put me in the nets because they just didn't really have a spot on the roster for me, which just, I guess, <laughs> happened to stick. 
Um, and uh, it was, it was odd because I never realized that I was maybe like, I, I'm, I'm a very short goaltender, I guess. Uh, and everyone kind of knows that of me. And so uh, I never realized that, that that would play against me eventually as I would, um, I was, I, I would play um, in the juvenile level and then elite level. Um, then I, I got to understand like, oh, okay, I'm different than, you know, goalies in other provinces or such, such things. But you know what, I like the adversity and that was fine by me. So I've been playing since I was nine. Uh, we played at school against other schools every week. We had two to three practices a week, um, coaches, all that stuff. So that was really fun. Uh, and I just never stopped. And afterwards I played for uh, the Panthers uh, in the juvenile level. Um, and the Panthers decided to split, I guess, at some point. There were no um, no teams at that point really in Quebec to compete at that level um, really competitively. And so I took it upon myself with one or two other girls uh, that I knew to just build a team, I guess. And I was 19 at that point. Uh, and that's how the Dynamite um, got created in 2011. And that was my last uh, juvenile championship. Uh, which was by far my favorite, I guess. Uh, and uh, the team still exists to this day. It still competes. It now made babies because there's a, a juvenile uh, team. There's a bunch of uh, dynamite teams for uh, little girls and little boys in the province, which I think is great. And I take absolutely no credit for that. But girls I played with started this whole program for younger kids and they now have the logo and everything. And it just makes me smile to think that this all started, you know, 12, 13 years ago, just because we didn't have a team. Right. So um, we just we've been playing for a long time together. Um, and then we decided to play at the intermediate level before um, going to the elite level, because I think there's a Everyone can agree there's a big step between juvenile and um, and elite. And um, just very recently, now I've moved to um, playing defense and center in the, at the intermediate level, which is interesting and a new challenge, I will say. <laughs> That's a bit of my broom ball, broom ball career a little bit. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. Um... <laughs> As you know, like Cam and I are both goalies, so goalies hold a special, special candle in our in our hearts. So we know what you're talking about when, when you say you're too short or, or you can't get, get this or that. It, it's yeah, it's tough there's sometimes. There's always something. Yeah. There's, there's always, always something. something. <laughs> yeah, it's never our fault. I'm telling you, it's, it's something else. Yeah, so, correct. Okay. Well, thank you very much. So, since this is a podcast about motherhood and family let's talk about your families your like immediate families currently and how that's how that's going and how you're able to juggle that and um because they are going to be a big part of this podcast as we move forward whoever wants to go i can go again okay. um so i have obviously a husband whose name is tyler uh we have been married for almost three years and we have two children uh, Nova is our daughter. She's two years old and Camp is 10 months old. He's our little boy. Um, they are 15 and a half months apart. So they are close in age, kind of similar to my sisters and I, uh, kind of keeping up with that trend. We're taking a little bit of a break now, but hopefully continue to grow our family in the future. Um, yeah, they're my biggest uh, supporters and fans. Uh, there's Camp and Nova love living at the arena because that's kind of what we do. Tyler is a big hockey fanatic. He uh, coaches competitive hockey, hockey uh, but he also has played broomball. He um, played broomball before I even knew him, which was kind of cool. And then when we met, he wasn't playing broomball at the time. And then I've kind of reintroduced it to him. Obviously, <laughs> he kind of had no choice <laughs> by marrying me. Um, so he gets a, a lot of the broomball life through me. Uh, and then I do hope one day that my children will be able to enjoy the sport just like I have, because uh, it is a family sport for myself. Um, both my parents played it. Um, and now all my sisters have and all of my brother in laws also do play, which is kind of cool. So it's 
definitely a big family thing. So that's a little bit about my immediate family, but I will probably talk a lot about my extended family as well because they're a huge part of my life. Okay, yeah. awesome. Thanks, Nicole. No so problem. like, so your, your husband doesn't currently play broomball right now? He's probably busy looking after the kids while you're playing broomball, right? combination there yeah he definitely does help me out for sure yeah. okay <laughs> but there are conflicts because he still coaches hockey so right. even last Sunday night like he was coaching and I was playing so the kids stayed up a little bit past bedtime and they stayed in the stands with my mom and and watched me play and so yeah so there are conflicts but generally that is the ideal plan for him to be at home with the kids but Actually, they do come to the arena a lot to watch. So, and that's where I prefer them to be because I want them to be exposed to that environment. Awesome. Thank you. Chloe? It feels like you guys can have a co-ed team in the future if you decide to. <laughs> it kind of sounds really fun as well. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is so cool. Um, yeah, I guess... Um, it's a little different. My, my, uh, my family wasn't playing broomball. You know, they had no, uh, we're, I was born in France. We're all from France. So I guess wow. it's, you know, any type of ice sport was not really, uh, in our genes, I should say. So it was kind of a, a shock to everybody. When you're like, why, why, why would you go in a place where it's cold and just like play, a sport there instead of playing soccer or something that we're more used to um but hey I don't know I just don't listen to anybody apparently so I just did my own thing um and uh my, my mom used to come to the games and she would clap in the stands because she just didn't know my brother used to play tennis I mean she didn't know what you were supposed to how you were supposed to cheer or <laughs> that stuff so it was really cute she really tried uh but it was really just um, me by myself uh, for the longest time um, and I guess my my friends became a little bit like my family because of that because it just took over in my life it's such an important part of all of our lives I guess you know when winter comes and even I mean when fall comes you know you just get ready for the season and all of that so it just made me realize that family is maybe more than you know just your um, your actual DNA which I think is pretty cool and then since, um, yeah, I've been uh, with my partner for six years. Uh, we have two kids as well, uh, a boy and a girl, Nathan and Charlie. Um, Nathan is three years old. Charlie is eight months. Um, and uh, it's fantastic. We're at the rink all the time. I mean, everything that Nicole just said, I can't echo enough. Um, my uh, partner plays hockey. He doesn't play broomball, but uh we go and watch him I know he he likes it. and I will tell you this um when we used to play before we had kids I used to drive about an hour to go play with uh my friends because they're on the north shore of Montreal I'm, I'm on the south shore of Montreal so it was quite a bit of a drive but anywho it didn't you know it didn't matter um as long as I could play with them and it was on Sundays it was fine and it was a it was a fun activity and he would come with me um and we were playing in a co-ed division because there were no women's league. Um, but we decided to play as girls only. Um, maybe sometimes it was like a dad that was coming or whoever to, to play with us. But mainly we wanted to practice because that was the only time we were practicing for nationals, basically. So, you know, we thought, you know, it doesn't matter practicing against guys. It's just going to make us tougher. It doesn't matter. So we used to do that. And at some point I asked Matt if he wanted to play. He was like, there's nothing to it. I mean, sure, I'll play. And I mean, he did good because hockey players, they have, you know, a ho the hockey sense is the same. Um, and I think it applies. And it's also slower in broom ball. So I guess that helps in a way, because if, you know, the positioning is good, you get you get a bit of a pass versus hockey that's quicker. Um, but he was he was having a tough time just because the cardio is so different and every shift is just so much harder because of that. Cause you just can't, you can't just skate to the bench. Um, and so he never made fun of me ever again. Cause he used to come and say, Oh man, that looks, looks kind of boring. Cause it's slow. It's slower when you're used to watching hockey for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's just such a different, I mean, I don't think of it that way because broomball is my my sport. But if hockey is your sport and then you come and watch broomball, maybe you're going to, you won't understand 
how you could be watching this for an hour, which I totally disagree. But now that he's played, he understands how hard it is to actually uh, play a full game. And full disclosure, it wasn't like two full 18 minutes. So, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, make him play at Nationals just yet. Yeah. But it was fun to see him kind of experience that and share that. And now the kids come whenever we have um, a tournament. Um, they're in the stands. Uh, Nathan loves it. He does tell me that I'm not wearing skates and that it's dangerous because he still doesn't fully understand how the shoes could be appropriate for that type of activity, which is fine. But I think the more you expose them to it, it's it's so fun. And it's I, I don't really know what the vibe is in Ontario because I know that you have it's still you still have more teams and more regions playing and you have regionals, which we don't have because we don't have enough players but here, Broomball really took a hit from, for example, when our parents were playing. Um, and so it's kind of fun to see, to expose them to it and to maybe see that, I don't know, it could create maybe a, a surge in players and you see really, really young uh, players starting to play, even when they're just five, six, putting them on the ice, to just get them used to it. Um, and so I hope, I hope that sticks and they decide to to join me and not daddy on the ice. I would like that. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what we're hoping for too. Trust me. <laughs> we're in your corner for sure. Yeah. I think everyone is starting to, we're at that age where you see everyone coming with their families at the rank and it's so precious to experience that. And just to think that that's going to, I don't know, hopefully have an impact on the sport. Um, it could be could be fun to see in a few years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I know out here in Saskatchewan, where we're trying hard. At, it's just trying to find ice. Like ice costs are so high, and trying to find ice, we're trying to promote it as a, as an affordable sport, right? It's not like hockey where you're paying umpteen fees and you have to travel all the time and and this and that. But we can't even seem to get ice at a decent time. You know, it's like $275 an hour to $325 an hour to get ice. And, you know, if you don't book it in July, you're not getting it because yeah. Hockey Regina or Hockey Saskatoon or they, they they have it already. They book the ice in July, stroke a, a massive check, and then they just say, well, you're going to have to go talk to them to get ice. And it's, it's tough. But I, I, I hope I hope there is going to be a future for sure. Um, we're, we're trying, we're just going to keep trying and, and keep, keep bringing the kids out and make them fall in love with it. I know I've, I've got a 13 year old, my, my boy, he's him and, and my nephew, they're both 13 and they're playing and they absolutely love it. And they want to, they're bringing their friends out and we're getting more and more players all the time. So, which is good. That's awesome. Good. Yeah. Okay. We're very, so. we're very fortunate in Ontario that way. Our, our junior our junior programs are doing quite well, which is awesome to see. And ice time is costly as well. But I think because our programs are so strong, we're able to balance that and, and manage it. So we're very, very fortunate here. Awesome. I'm glad that you're able to beat hockey out with those ice times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've had a few conflicts in the past and uh, Brewell yeah. people are not happy about it. And they definitely voice their opinions, which is great. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yes. So... Okay, so we're talking about kids, right? So obviously you ladies have had some children. I guess after that, you know, have, having your babies, how hard was it to get back on the ice playing again? Or how soon? Like, I am i don't know. Did you guys plan your pregnancies accordingly to the room ball season? <laughs> or, in a perfect was it, world. <laughs> yeah, in a perfect world, eh? Or, or was it, you know, an oops type thing? Not, not really an oops, but you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> and, and was it easier, Unexpected you know, blessing, you, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and you guys have chatted, like you got, you both have two children. So was it easier after the first one or easier after the second one? You know, I'll let Nicole? Chloe start this one. And okay, then I'll Chloe, Chloe, go ahead, <laughs> Chloe, you're up. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm always going to be honest. That's one thing about me that everyone knows. Yeah. So um, it's hard. It's hard. It's frustrating. I think um, 
I've heard that from so many different women. When you play a sport, um, especially competitively, uh, you want to make sure that you don't lose too much, even though in, in, in my um, in my situation, it was it was two pregnancies that were planned that I somehow did not think of planning around the broom ball seasons, although that's not crazy at all, because I know a lot of people who have and that has worked for them. And for some reason, I don't know, I just didn't I didn't think of it that way. Um, and it didn't work at all. <laughs> it, it affected. Uh, well, my first one was during COVID. So actually, it didn't affect that much in the sense that I, I wouldn't have played as much as I would have thought, but we didn't know. So in hindsight, it didn't change much. Um, and then the second one was a totally different. Um, I didn't mind at that point. And I'll explain that a little bit because it actually had a huge impact on my um, broom ball career, if I want to call it that. Um, Cause I was, you know, I was with the dynamite for 10 years almost when I got pregnant with Nathan and obviously being a goaltender, um, I needed to be replaced. Uh, and it's a tough spot finding a, a good goaltender, uh, which I get. And, um, the, the girls found a really good one who they were able to go to provincials with. And I traveled with them to provincials that year. Um, and they won. And so they qualified for national to represent Quebec the next year, which, um, to be frank, there's only two right now, there's only two, uh, Quebec teams. So both get to go, but it's still, we're still very, very competitive in our province. And so we definitely do want to win. Uh, and there's the history of that. So it was a big moment. It was amazing to witness. Honestly, it was beautiful and so much hard work, um, that finally paid off. But, um, obviously it was bittersweet because I wasn't in the nets. Right. Um, and there's no point in thinking, you know, what would have happened if, if I had been in the nets, because that's just, we'll, we'll never know. Um, and afterwards, um, the team decided to keep the goaltender that, um, that they had, uh, that they won provincials with, which uh, was a big decision, I'm sure. Um, but it was really hard for me because I had been with that team. I built that team uh, from the ground up, managed that team. Every, you know, tournament, um, every booking of hotels, um, making the jerseys, whatever you want, you know, it was, I was, I was highly invested. So it was really hard for me to then think, okay, well, well, what now, right? Um, and, and it's even harder when you're a new mom, because you have so much to navigate, obviously. Uh, and you just, you're already kind of upset in a way that you missed so much. Um, and you want to get back in shape and you want to be as quick and you want to be, you know, as, um, as good as you were, maybe better. Uh, and that was a lot to to process and I didn't know if I was going to play broom ball anymore um although it's you know my childhood sport and it's my passion I just didn't know where I fit in um and looking back that summer uh before you know knowing that I wasn't going to go to nationals the next year because they didn't need me um and that ultimately it was because I took that year off but also, it gave them an opportunity to maybe better the team. Um, I don't know, you know, that's from an, an outside perspective. But it gave me a few months to really just ask myself the hard questions of who I want to be as a person, who I want to be as a player um, or as a, um, an athlete, because I just sports is in my DNA. I absolutely adore team sports. And I think the values that it brings, it's just there's nothing like it. Um, and I wouldn't have asked myself those questions if I had had the spot on the team that I had always had because, you know, it's what I was used to. So it was really rough um, to kind of 
realized I wasn't maybe going to play at the elite level anymore when I had for just so long. Um, but that also allowed me to really focus on myself. Uh, I trained way more. I'm in better shape today than I was at 20 ish years, hundred percent. I am mentally way stronger, way more capable of handling just, you know, being a mom, is, is, that's what you do. Just so much. The mental load is, is constant. So you just learn how to navigate all that. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm at now, where it has had a huge impact, obviously on paper. Um, I may never play elite again, you know, and that's kind of a, an odd thought for me because I'm like, Hey, that's not fair. You know, I'm, I feel so much better than, than when I even did play. Um, but at the same time, as cheesy as it sounds, I think I, tr I really trust the future. Um, I'm going to be ready if an opportunity arises. And in the meantime, it allowed me to have fun. And not that I didn't have fun before, but in the league that I play, that is only women um, in my neck of the woods. Um, I said, you know what? I don't want to play goalie anymore. I want to try something else because why not? And mm -hmm. so I started playing defense and center and I'm actually kind of okay at it. And I'm, <laughs> I'm having a ton of fun. Um, it was our first tournament this weekend. It went really, really well. Um, and so that's why I'm, I'm slowly getting used to playing at the intermediate level, um, which I didn't think I would maybe do quite now. Um, but I'm actually having more fun probably than, you know, having any kind of pressure. So for now, that's what it is, but it's kind of crazy to think that, um, that's something that women would have to handle and not men, right? Like yep. I was forced to take that year off and I'm so, I mean, obviously there's absolutely no regret there, but the impact that it has had, I think honestly has made me a better person, hundred percent. Um, and just way more confident in who I am. Um, so I think it's a bit of a silver lining in there and I don't regret, regret it. Uh, but I do remember those months afterwards just being really hard. Uh, and I hope that, you know, one day I get to compete at a higher level because I just, I crave it and that's who I am. And if physically I'm able to do it, I hope I get to do it again. But in the meantime, I'm really enjoying just playing the sport just as I did when I was a kid. So that's kind of that's where awesome. I'm at. That's awesome. <laughs> that's yeah. that's, that's a, a journey and a half. I'll tell you that much for sure. And I yeah. just want to, I just want to remind you, Chloe, there are opportunities and room for someone with your passion and your drive for the sport in organization, like the yeah. Quebec Federation of Broomball, get on the executive, do something. Yeah. You know, and I did you that. want to be a part it's, of the CBF. Like It's so, it's so interesting. You mentioned that I did that when I was way younger. I started at the Federation when I was maybe 15 and I did it for a good five years and, and I loved it. Um, and I guess, you know, then I just focused on the dynamite and building that because that's what yeah. was needed. But it's you're right. And and it's funny that also Nicole was mentioning that she got the opportunity to play for Saskatchewan. And I did the same with Alberta because uh, I lived there for a little bit. And it's so fun to see how other organizations um handle everything because I think we're so fortunate fortunate in in Quebec and in Ontario mm -hmm. we don't always know um I mean we know because you compete against them and you see and also the level may not be the exact same all the time and you have so many more teams from Ontario and Quebec competing and all of that so we we know a bit but I think there's so much work to be done in other provinces as well that that's also something to to think about, you know. Yeah, and there's coaching, right? For sure, for sure. I, I love coaching. Yeah, yeah. Get in yeah. there, coaching. There's the VTC. Be a part of of the elite program by by coaching a team, right? Like, correct. It may not be the same as competing, but you know what? I've been there, done it. I've played a lot of elite broomball, coached a lot of elite broomball. It honestly, the rewards are if not better, sometimes coaching. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Being a, a good leader is 
yep. no matter what the role is and how you handle that, I think can be really rewarding. So 100%, yeah. just don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm here to stay. Unfortunately, you're you're stuck with me for a while. We'll just figure that, out how that, eventually. Yeah, that's a great thing. That's a great thing. That All excites right. me because I'm looking forward to meeting the Chloe on the ice that's playing either center or defense because meeting you as goalie was always a challenge. And, and uh, yeah, so I'm excited to maybe get to meet you on the ice one day in a different Who position. Knows? <laughs> who knows I would love that I would love that yeah <laughs> don't count yourself out I think there's still that chance definitely absolutely you sound driven <laughs> enough that's for sure I, I appreciate it I am that's for sure I'm driven and my my I guess my body for now knock on wood is is able to to follow so as long as that happens we'll see for the rest but I would love that that would be exciting <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> awesome. all right Nicole you're up um well, Chloe's story is, uh, it's great. You're very honest, just like I am. <laughs> um, and it's interesting because I wanted to kind of see what you were going to share first, because you actually talked on something that I was going to say that a coach, uh, a coach from another team actually once shared from with me coming back from my second pregnancy that has really stuck. And I think it was because I was doubting myself after coming back from pregnancies. Um, I was losing a bit of confidence in my playing. Um uh, my personal coach was kind of always second guessing whether I should be playing and my abilities. And I was struggling with that because I had personally tried really, really hard to get into good shape, to be ready to return. I felt I was playing quite normal than I had. And it was really hard. And then another coach had said to me, it's interesting because a lot of people don't recognize that generally the, the people that are in the best shape or the women that are in the best shape are generally the ones who've just had children because they're more aware of their body. They want to become more uh, physically active again. They're eating better. Um, their nutrition's in line. So um, to hear you share that, I think it's very true. And it was really powerful that that coach had shared that with me because he was absolutely right. It's probably the, I've always been very aware of my fitness level and I try to eat well. That is still something I don't do the best at. But um something that has really stuck and I definitely can attest to that and a lot of women that I have seen who have had children um, especially on my team the spades we have a lot of girls going through all this in life um, I think last year we had three or four girls out coming back from pregnancies or were pregnant this year we have um, two that are currently out from pregnancy so it's very common on our team right now and the girls who have returned to the sport are in phenomenal shape so it's it's really true that women who have children are really looking after themselves or trying to look after themselves. So um, for me, with my pregnancies coming back after Nova was a bit of a struggle, mainly because it was my first pregnancy. I had also experienced a C-section. I don't know about Chloe's experience. Um, C-sections are a little bit more challenging to your body because you kind of cut open your abdomen and you have to rebuild those muscles. Um, so that was a bit of a challenge for her uh, coming back from her. I had Nova in September. So coming back into the Brumel season, six months postpartum, I was kind of at the start. I was pretty lucky to not miss much of the season. Um, so it was a slow start. That's for sure for me to get back in. But then by the January, it felt kind of like normal, probably not in the, the best shape I had been, but I did my best to be in that best physical shape. And then after my second pregnancy, this was probably my most difficult one to go through because camp was born in December. So sitting and watching my team was probably one of the hardest parts <laughs> about being pregnant because uh, I didn't usually miss a league game. I didn't miss a tournament game. Um, and at that time, my sister Brittany was also expecting. So we actually sat on the sidelines together and her and I were really big leaders of our team. So for us to kind of sit back, it was kind of like more of a coaching role, which was cool um, and mentoring and just being that leadership. So, uh, but a lot of girls had definitely shared that they missed having her and I on the ice with them because it's different when you're, when you're being the leader from the bench versus being on the ice. So it was kind of nice to hear that. Um, and then when we returned, um, it was, uh, I think I returned a week before our regional tournament, which was, uh, I actually kind of went back a week earlier than I should have, just didn't tell the doctors. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was, uh, but again, I had already had uh, no vibe, so she, and she's a wild animal, so I actually feel like I've, I'm in probably my best shape now than I've been in a long time because now I'm chasing after two little ones. Um, I'm back to work. Things are busy. Um, life just happens. So I think that that is, 
it's they're, they're kind of my blessing in disguise because they actually keep me more fit. They keep me more aware of what I'm eating because then I also have to feed them those nutrition, nu- nutritious meals. Um, so yeah, so I'm grateful for them because they're also helping me be in great shape. So yeah, I came back last year right before regionals and finished off the season. Um, but other than that, I think that's the hardest part is sitting and watching um, your team play and knowing that you could be contributing in some shape or form. But at least my leadership was still something I could contribute. Uh, so, yeah, that was kind of the, the hardest part about getting back into it. Um, actually, after I had camp, my third game in, I had re-injured a knee injury I previously had. So that was probably a big challenge is that when you are – pregnant you go through those body changes and then some injuries that you might have had before kind of make their way back um so I I wasn't always the best at looking after my injuries when I was in my younger years kind of just ignored them Uh, but now that I'm a mother and trying to continue to play competitive sports I did do some physio for my knee and uh, actually my knee is probably in the best shape it's ever been in so it was a huge it, it was costly but a really uh, worthwhile investment because I came back this season um, pain-free, which I haven't actually probably played room ball pain-free in many years. So definitely worth the investment of getting your body looked after. And that's one thing I stress to a lot of the moms on the team, even younger athletes who are getting injuries. When I played with Saskatchewan last year at nationals, a couple of the young girls were complaining about knee injuries or back injuries. And I was like, honestly, do it now. It will benefit you now when you're younger than when you're later in your years. So um, that's one thing that I would say was probably my biggest challenge or learning experience was coming back and having an injury and then actually looking after myself because mom looks after everyone and every everything, but sometimes mom has to remember to look after mom. Um, and then Broomble especially, that was my big focus was making sure that I was able to continue to play the way I would but like I, to play. I feel like... Also, you know that if you are out for two weeks and are unable to chase them around, yeah, that's 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 not good. That's a no, no good, exactly. Right? So it's probably unrealistic. Yeah. Yeah. So you know the impact because when we were younger, it was like meh, whatever. You know, it, it, I'll figure it out and it's fine. But now the impact is much greater. So it's actually Absolutely. that made me realize that that. That's, I think a lot of us do that where it's like, Hey, I need to get this checked out or I need to, because it impacts my entire life, not just mm-hmm. broom ball. So that's probably yeah. why. Yeah. Definitely. So I, I guess we, we kind of answered really the next question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Like, like, so do you feel like there was certain pressure performance wise that, that you were putting on yourself or others were putting on you, you know, to get back? to the way you used to play and and do you feel that you had to you know fill the expectations that you had to be the exact same player you used to be before your pregnancies uh, do you want to start Chloe or do you want me to touch on this <laughs> I'll, mine is really short because I, as as much as a, I, it's not going to sound very positive but I just felt like clearly I was, maybe I hadn't been good enough for a while and no one told me. And that's how I felt. You know what I mean? Because knowing that I could be replaced, um, I won't say that easily. I don't think anyone that's, I'm not saying, you know, that anyone would have, um, but they did find a a good goalie who's unfortunately not with a team anymore, but now they have someone else. um, It made me question, uh, shoot, you know, where, when did this start or when did, you know, um, the last nationals that we did, um, there were, we were two goaltenders with someone who I absolutely adore, who's goaltending for, uh, Temis, whose name is Ozmari, who, um, everyone loves, obviously. She's also a very short goaltender. So it was great because it was, we had the same type of style, but she's so quick and she's so amazing. It was such a pleasure to honestly share, um, my time with her at a nationals. Um, and I was ready to do that type of setup again, obviously that's, I'm, uh, it's really all about the team in my, in my opinion and the best you play, um, as a goaltender, the more games you're going to play. And that's just, it's always been that way and that's fine. So I think the impact that it, it has had, obviously, and to a certain extent, there was no more stress because I knew I was gonna, I wasn't going to goaltend, um, at the level that I was used to, 
the following year. So was there pressure? Not anymore. Um, I would have been ready to handle that, I'm sure. Uh, but that's just not how it went. So, you know, in a way, maybe it's better because I got to play, as I said, I got to start playing again at my own rhythm for fun, win a provincials at the intermediate level for fun. You know, like who does that? You know, it was, it, it, it was great. So I don't know. It's, I guess I didn't have that in the end, you know, which was maybe a good thing. Oh, I think I, where you're I, at, I, Chloe, sorry. I was just going to no, jump in with no. what her last thought was there. Um, where you're at, I feel, is very similar to where uh, my sisters and I were at when we actually started our spades team and went intermediate mm -hmm. for a couple of years. We kind of just lost a bit of the joy because it was so competitive. Um, and we were just like, this is not for us anymore. It was sucking the life out of it a little bit. So we're like, we need to do something different. We need change. And then we went to that intermediate level and we had the most fun, I think, that we had had since my juvenile years, which is, yeah. it speaks words to that. I mean, I learned so much through those competitive years. I would never take those back a hundred percent. Um, but it's cool to like kind of rebuild and restart and start in a different spot in your career in Broom Bowl. Um, and, and it was rewarding to bring in those new bodies and just have fun. Like there was no pressure. Um, building their confidence was kind of the new cool thing. So I think where you're at is kind of like that, finding that joy and that love again. And I think yeah. that that will bring that competitiveness back out again. And maybe, who knows, maybe almost start a, a different team one day and go competitive right like you've done it yeah. before why not do it again yeah who knows but I think what you guys yeah. did is what's what's fascinating is taking girls from you know really outside the sport and bringing them in and then mm -hmm. and then actually being competitive to the point that you would win <laughs> you know your your big your big tournaments is I mean that's huge because that's a big accomplishment. Also, I, I don't know. I, I, to me, that's just, that's absolute. And, and that shows also that, you know, women, when you're an athlete, whatever sport that is, you know, we can adapt um, to that, that, that hockey sense that I was talking about. I think it's, yes. it's that sports DNA that you either have or don't have. And then if you put in the work, I think you can, you can do it hundred uh, percent. But I think it's, it's a crazy achievement when you said that earlier. I just couldn't believe it. I'm like, oh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. When we reflect, it's yeah. pretty awesome to know where we started to where we are. It is a pretty neat story to be living and well, continue to live. I'm excited to see how you guys perform at the elite level because clearly that's, I mean, you've proven that that's where you belong. So now it's like, okay, <laughs> let's do this. You know, we've taken the time to build this properly to have the right foundation you clearly have the right you know um the right leaders and so it's 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 kind of like my new favorite story that I didn't know existed so I'm now <laughs> rooting for a team I didn't know existed before exactly awesome. it's really really cool <laughs> very fortunate to have a good core to start it yeah um, so which part of the game do you guys think is harder to perform when you get back into it after coming back after your pregnancies like is there a certain part of the game you think is harder than than anything is it just is it the mental game is it the physical is it is it you know just getting you know leaving the house you know to go <laughs> into the dressing room you know do you guys you know you know what i mean I laugh because that's probably the hardest part is leaving the house knowing the children are good so I can go and enjoy an hour of a sport that I love by myself. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I laugh at that because uh, it is my, like, my escape from being a mom sometimes. But at the same time, because I play such a leadership role on my team, um, it doesn't often just turn off, but it's a different mindset. So it is, like, like I said, like our, our Broomball team is like another little family and a lot of us are moms. So we all kind of get to go and just kind of talk about mom stuff or talk about team stuff and life stuff. So they're just kind of like my outlet sometimes. So um, the hardest part about going back, I, I was very fortunate because like fitness wise, I was in pretty like relatively normal. Um, but the injury thing, I think was a big thing for me. The hardest part was 
like having those pains to kind of adapt to. And then obviously now I've returned this season pain-free. I'm knocking on wood, but that continues. Um, but I, I don't know. I think it was, it was just more joyful than anything just to be back with my people playing the sport I love and, and modeling that for my children and my family. I think that's, I, I don't think that was the hard, I don't think there was a hard thing for me actually. Um, more so just excitement, which is, is cool. I think the hardest thing was just the, the injury thing for me. That, that would be my biggest thing. Okay, Chloe? No, I, I, I really echo what Nicole was saying. Um, I didn't feel guilty leaving to play. Um, it was more of a, have I prepped everything I needed to prep? Is everyone good? Kind of like, where are we at, at during the routine? Because it's usually at night that we have to, you know, go and play. Our league is on Friday nights, for example. So it's it's right in the middle of everything, bath time and all that good stuff. So <laughs> just making sure, you know, uh, my partner is set and, you know, I, he doesn't need me for anything. So it's it's the mental load, I guess. But honestly, once I leave and I'm in my car, it's 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 just the best to know that it's your time. Um, you get to do what you love and you just, sometimes you get reminded, I think of like how long you've been playing and how, Oh man, you know, this is really something I just, I love to do. Like I've loved this for so long. I used to be such a small little human when I started doing this and I'm still doing it today. Like that's kind of cool, you know? So it's giving us time to reflect and just really focus on ourselves, which definitely mm -hmm. we don't do a lot yeah. no <laughs> what is no, that yeah, yeah. yeah. us what so, who i don't know so what are some of the challenges in keeping up with the sport you know like like you guys have children now and i understand that there are routines you just had mentioned it chloe there's routines there's there's things you guys got going on like is there but any other challenges in keeping up well with a little you know when nicole said nicole said um oh you know last sunday my husband was coaching and i i was playing and that was kind of like my mom was in the stands and and they had to you know bedtime was a little bit later i especially with my first i was a little bit um strict when it, <laughs> when it came to oh my god you know it's about seven it's gonna be 7 30 and now it's late and then a meltdown is gonna come and then it's gonna affect the night and I I was I wasn't I've never been a go with the flow type of person I'm a very organized person um who likes to predict everything which I think having kids is great for that because this is everything is just out the window and um you just can't you can't and everyone knows that and people used to tell me that but until you experience it you have no clue so it taught me to just kind of be more flexible um and enjoy also like just enjoy the moment a little bit more like hey it's gonna be fine and we're like you know creating memories here and we're you know everything can can move it doesn't have to be so dead set on a schedule um so I think that's what's been really hard for me at the beginning is kind of mentally letting go of that because I, I was like oh okay are they in bed should I text my partner like knowing if like everything's okay it's like now I don't do that anymore I mean three years in I'm like eh, whatever you know it is what it is but it was a huge work on myself I think um because it, it, yeah, it was, it was a lot on that side. Um, but the other thing I would say is we don't have any family around. So we do have a type of like meeting every season to know which days is he playing hockey, which days am I playing broom ball? What are the tournaments this year that I'm doing so that he can plan around like whether having his mom around or coming to see me with his parents, but like it's a lot of organization, but I wouldn't say it's a struggle at all. It's just, that's my organized side where I, I need to have a bit of a plan, but it's taught me to just relax a little bit more um, than usual. <laughs> okay, Nicole? Uh, it's funny because I would say I'm a little bit opposite of Chloe in the aspect <laughs> of like scheduling things. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, 
how do you do it all? And your kids are always with you. And like, yeah. it's weird for people to see me without my children. And like, we could be at a 10 o'clock game and my kids would be there and people are like, how? And I'm like, I don't know. They sleep really well and they sleep in. So I'm just very blessed and fortunate. <laughs> so I hit the jackpot on that part of my children's lives. But I, I don't know. I've never... I am a scheduled person. I am an organized person, but at the same time, I've always kind of just had to go with the flow. And I think that comes from just always living a crazy busy lifestyle that I've learned that sometimes you're going to get five hours of sleep. Sometimes you might get 10 hours of sleep and it's just the way of life. And I kind of want to, I want my kids to be able to adapt to that even at a young age. Cause I do know there are a couple of my teammates who are like, Nope, my kids need to be in bed at seven. And they're like, how do you let them stay up past their bedtime? And I'm just like, I don't know. It, it, it just works. And I think because they don't know any different, that's why. Um, but yeah, like, and, and to have my kids last week, like we had our league game at eight o'clock and knowing that Tyler wasn't going to be there. It was like, well, I guess they're just going to go to bed late tonight. Like that was just the reality. And it didn't worry me because they're just used to it. And it like, I'm very fortunate. Like they're not grumpy when they are past their bedtimes. They're, they're excited to be at the new environments that they're in. So um, I, I didn't have that challenge. Um, and I am very fortunate to have family around me um, opposite of Chloe as well. Um, but your friends become family too. And I am also lucky to be at the arena. And if I needed to have a teammate from another team even help me out, they would um, just because we're so connected in our, in our community of broomball, which is a really cool thing about broomball. Really. It's like, you have your team, you have your family, but it's like you have all your outside people and our arenas are starting to fill with players and their children. And it's like the most exciting thing to see at tournaments. Like they all like take a little corner and they set up their kids zone and it's like the best thing. And, and it's like, we all kind of just keep an eye on each other's kids and they, we let each other's kids roam. So that's kind of the cool thing about, um, yeah, seeing that, that broom ball family happen everywhere with their kids. Uh, Cause a lot of us are at that stage in our lives with having little ones around. And I think if we normalize it, then people are more willing to have their kids at the arena, um, which is maybe what I'm trying to model. I don't know. I never really have thought about it like that, but <laughs> maybe that's what I'm inspiring being like, well, if she can yeah. do it, maybe I can do it. Because if you ever yeah. are stuck, then maybe it's like, well, I've had even teammates before be like, is your mom going to be at the arena? Can she watch my kids? <laughs> it's like, yeah, if you can come play with us tonight, because we only have seven players, I'll make sure my mom can watch your children. So it's kind of like, <laughs> sometimes my mom is like the broom ball daycare provider. <laughs> it just happens. <laughs> but She's I usually there watching us anyway. So why not watch somebody's children while you're watching your own I children? Love play? <laughs> I love it. So that's it. kind of like the cool solution to some of the challenges that we face. Um, I have been lucky. I have not even needed to use a babysitter outside of my family yet. Um, really for anything I do. Um, my husband's family lives an hour away, but if I ever needed them for a tournament, like I could call them and they would be here because that they don't do much more than be grandparents, which I'm very lucky to have. Um, so yeah, I, uh, challenges with keeping the kids in my sport. Uh, I, it would just be just making sure I don't have a conflict with Tyler's hockey schedule or work schedule. Um, yeah, other than that, it's, it's, uh, I'm pretty lucky to be able to just bring them to the arena and have, and know that they're going to be looked after while I can go and enjoy my game. <laughs> awesome. Well, that, that sounds fantastic. And that's the way it should be. I couldn't agree more. Like that sounds absolutely wonderful. So, <laughs> so do you think the fathers feel the same way or go through the same challenges as you guys do? You know, when, when you, you know, okay, I'm going to broom ball. See you. Bye. Do you find this that is often a, a change room conversation in, in our <laughs> dressing room because we often you, come in going, if only they knew how hard it was to plan tonight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because they are often one track mind. I'm not going to lie. Um, speaking with many women and women with children, um, I think they forget that sometimes they should be thinking about what their kids are going to do when their wives want to do something or they have something on. Um, it's often a having to say, oh, I have this tonight. So what's the plan with the kids? They didn't think of it on their own. I had to initiate that thinking. Um, but once I initiate it, then it's usually <laughs> he's quick to step in, which is I'm great grateful for. But uh, I, I definitely don't think they have near the struggle and stress because even if I were to leave the diaper bag totally empty just by chance one night, 
when I was going to the game, I guarantee you he would have not have opened it to see that there was nothing in it. He would have picked it up and went to the ring. So just a lot of those little things that we have to prep, knowing that they're going to be good where they go, having all their needs in the diaper bag, because uh, they often don't think to check it <laughs> unless I say, can you please make sure this is in the diaper bag <laughs> before you leave? So I don't know if it's quite the same. <laughs> Guilty. As, um, You're not the only one. one. <laughs> You're not the yeah. only one, at yeah. least. You can, yeah, you know, that's, you know, we, 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 we love you for everything that you are <laughs> and everything that you aren't. And we know you can't even, we don't, we're not even mad about it, but we still <laughs> enjoy talking about it because we feel reassured that this is kind of like common grounds for all of us. Um, everything that Nicole just said, oh man. <laughs> that diaper bag <laughs> I should never... test it one time and just be like take everything out and see if he would just leave with it empty because I honestly have this weird feeling he would <laughs> personally Matt would Matt would leave um, he has left the house without the bag oh. Um, oh dear. It ha- it's, it's only happened maybe once or twice and it wasn't for like a big whatever but like going to the grocery store or whatever and I'm like you never know just take it mm-hmm. just in case but that's just it's the mental load and I think that's so nice that's so nice for you guys to just not have to <laughs> know things are gonna get taken care of you have to leave for a weekend no problem like we got you covered <laughs> it's fine you know and um that's just it sounds nice I don't know a mom who would tell me that that's how they that's how it is uh, at their household where it's like, no, I can leave and like whatever, you know, we, we think of that stuff. We think of the, 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 what's coming up the next Monday to make sure we're, you know, prepped for if we come back on a Sunday and it's late or whatever, if there's special activity, God knows what. Um, so I think, you know, our, our minds work in very different ways and that's okay. It is so good. yes, it is different, but I don't think it's, I wouldn't say it's harder and I wouldn't want us to feel like, oh my God, it's, you know, getting back into the sport is so hard. No, it's not. It's not. If you, if you want to, and if it's important to you, you will figure out a way to do it. Um, And I think your partner should be able to support you in that and be there for you. Um, And that, that comes in different, different ways. I think. And I do think that they have, they learn over time because it is getting better. I mean, we've only been at this parenting thing for two years. So (laughs) I do think that I do notice things are starting to become a little more automatic for Tyler when he's doing things with the kids. And I don't have to worry as much, I guess, as I might have in the past. So I think it does get easier over time. Like Chloe is saying, like, don't let this conversation scare anybody off because no, not if you have a good partner and it wouldn't work if we were both the same mindset, it really wouldn't work. So they're your partner for a reason. They will figure out how to balance us out. And yeah. And yeah, it's, uh, but I definitely don't think we think the same. That is for sure. And our, our mind loads are, are quite significantly different. <laughs> okay. I agree. Awesome. So I guess, so what do you think the biggest difference is between men and women in the game of broomball itself take the kids away you know what the the only thing yeah the the only thing that i could think of (laughs) was not it it, it, honestly like it's it and that has nothing to do with the kids so i was really trying to think of the sport itself yeah i think men's broomball is way quicker way faster than than women the the pace of it is so different um and I guess it's probably the same for all sports but I for some reason um and watching games last weekend at our first tournament it it, it was it was obvious to me um uh, you know comparing level to level there were elite teams and there were intermediate teams and it's crazy how different it is just that the execution is so much faster um, even in the intermediate level, um, it's so much more riveting to watch, you know, an intermediate team play. 
um which it doesn't feel like when you're playing because when you're playing you're in the in the, the heat of the moment but um that's the one thing I would say that is different um which has nothing to do with kids or whatever I think or sport just is nice to watch for different reasons when you're watching women's or men's broomball but I just really enjoy watching men's broomball I will say just because the shots are so much um quicker and they're so you know on target uh I just find that generally speaking even the best teams at broomball um in on the women's side I don't know it's you know the pace is just it's just different fair enough fair enough Nicole? yeah I would I would agree with Chloe for everything she just shared it's kind of, uh, I think maybe it's a little sad that I'm going to say this, but if I were to introduce or trying to convince someone to come play broomball, I often will have them watch a men's game. Um, yeah. Just because it is that much quicker, stronger, physical, um, aggressive. Um, I feel like women have kind of become a little more timid on the ice especially from like when I played juvenile to now it's changed significantly in the physicality uh, in women's broom ball. Men too. I would say men have definitely like, I sure. mean, the amount of fighting that used to happen when I was a kid and we would be in the stands being like, fight, fight, fight. Like that's yeah. not thing anymore. Like it, it is, but it's not like it's kids want that, but it doesn't happen. Right. It, we're smarter. I think with our, our um, physicality on the ice, but even, even in today's society, like, or, and, and playing against juveniles nowadays, it's like, uh, we shy away from being physical against them. And I don't know why it's kind of moved that way, but I think we also don't want to scare people off from playing the sport. Um, and there's always been the conversation of, of playing no body contact. Um, I know that's a big push in some provinces. Um, our area still plays very physical and our women still play quite physical. Um, but yeah, I do think that men just uh, have just that little extra aggression in them and they have the harder shot. So uh, yeah, I do think there is, there is a difference, um, between men and women. And I, I think it just comes with body, body structure. Um, they're built to do things a little differently than us realistically in a form of having children and not having children. It's, it's yep. just, <laughs> it's just biology, right? <laughs> so, That's right. It's just the way yeah. it is. Yeah, I will exactly. say, though, that playing Terminators was just the worst for that. So <laughs> I do, oh, man, we hated playing them just because also <laughs> in Quebec, we have we have smaller players. That's just the thing. Um, and I we've always wondered why, but it's just a thing where an Ontario, a women's Ontario player will be taller and kind of like leaner if you have like a stereotype of the Ontario player versus Quebec player is always shorter. I and don't so, fit that caliber. I'm on the shorter side. Maybe I'm you like are in the, the province. That's true. <laughs> that's true. But very quick. Like, yeah, like just I, there's this thing. There's just this thing in Ontario. I don't know. And worse, it's just different. And when we <laughs> play, Terminators. I mean, they had the right name for for their team. That's for sure. It was <laughs> it was physical games, hundred percent. And it is true that it has changed drastically. I think on the men's side, for the better, hundred mm -hmm. percent. Um, on the women's side, yeah, the the opinions vary. I will say, but it's definitely yeah. changed a lot. It's, it's definitely a contention at every AGM when we talk about it, right? So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess growing up, Nicole, growing up, you have a huge broomball family. We've heard about it lots, your extended family, your immediate family, everything. So do you have a female broomball role model growing up that made you want to be the player you are? And it doesn't have to be a player. It could have been a coach. No, but how, how did she mold you or mentor you to becoming the athlete you are today? Uh, it's funny when I read this question leading into this, I had to really think um, because I have been involved in the sport for so long and surrounded by some very talented and competitive and successful players and coaches as well. Um, and I actually, I, I kind of did ask my sisters a little bit that if, uh, if you had to pick, who would you pick? And we all actually kind of agreed on like the same person, which was kind of cool. Um, uh, so it doesn't happen often, I bet. No, you guys agreeing no. on the same thing. 
<laughs> so I was more so like, you tell me who your person, and I asked like them at different times. So it's like, we weren't all in the same room. So it was kind of neat. Um, a, probably a big one that we would all say we aspired to be, or still even continue to try to be like, uh, cause she's a little bit older, obviously than all of us. And she was a huge role model, uh, when we were younger, which is, uh, a lot of people know her as bird. Um, so Amanda Smith, she was a, mm-hmm. a really big, uh, uh, leader and role model in, um, room while growing up. Uh, she's just so talented. She's very calm on the ice. She's got the height that I would love to have, <laughs> the extra reach, the length. I, I uh, envy that, that's for sure. Um, but she was also such a great teammate, too, that we, we were privileged enough to play with her. And, wow, the things that you could learn from her. And it was always positive. It was never negative. Um, we learned a lot from her. And, and still, like, to this day, like, watching her play, it's just, like, she doesn't miss a beat and hasn't missed a step. And, and I really hope that I can still be playing um, – years from now and still kind of feel like I kind of still got the the speed maybe because that would be my strength that I had when I was younger that people might be like I want to be quick like her and I'm still maybe when I'm 40 I'm still gonna be quick that's my goal um but yeah she was my big uh, role model as a player but then I thought about the question a little more too because you did ask it as a coach as well and um we were very very fortunate to be coached by three competitive people in our terminator year um our juvenile year and I think if we were we were not if we didn't have that opportunity to be coached by them we as in my family um I don't think we would be half the players we are today so we are fortunate to be coached by Tony Verbeek, Char Verbeek and Chris Fortney um who all competed coached uh, at the competitive national level uh they are the ones who introduced us to the national level we knew nothing about it as junior players and then we were at our qualifiers and they talked about this national thing and we're all like what the heck is this and then we ended up qualifying and it was the coolest thing ever and then since then like it just gave you that hunger for wanting it more but they taught us so much uh, the skills that we have even to this day when I were holding practices for our team and we're thinking like my sisters and I are thinking of skill practices to do it's like well let's do what we used to do with Tony and it was like it's cool to be able to refer back to things that taught us our foundation so we can teach the next, the, the new players and even the next generation, those, those key things that we were taught. So um, role model as a player would definitely be Amanda Smith bird and, and our coaching staff for our juvenile years were huge. Um, I can't, I can't thank them enough for making me the player I am today and uh, yeah. And aspiring me to do so much more with the sport as well. That's awesome. Thanks, Nicole. Mm-hmm. Chloe? Yeah, this is so cool. It's so fun to like <laughs> know those people. So I'm like, oh yeah. I mean, from an outside perspective, yes. Yeah. Pretty cool. Absolutely <laughs> crazy, insane, good, and just yeah, it's that's really fun. Um yeah, on my side, that one was really hard to answer as well. Um which I found really odd I, because we've been mm-hmm. playing for so long. I thought, oh yeah, there was all these people. Mm, no, you know, people who really stood out um, and had an impact to this day. I, I do think right away of a group of women because I was lucky enough to play with them at one um, nationals and it was an experience like no other. Um, so I joined um, the Huskies for a national um, as their second goaltender when it was, I was just finishing my juvenile years. Um, and with the dynamite, we were not ready to, to jump into elite just yet. And they asked me to come as a second goalie and I goaltended only one game. Uh, Cause that's what you do. Right. And they have such, they had, it's hard for me to think that they have retired now. Um, uh, it's hard for them to think that they've retired as well. <laughs> Um, but their goaltender who now goaltends for dynamite, um, Catherine Labbé is just absolutely fantastic and not just on the ice, but off the ice. She's a stellar human being. Um, and that really stood with me because they, and I don't want to give numbers because I wouldn't say exactly how many nationals they've won in the last like 20 years but a lot. Mm-hmm. Quite a few. That, yeah. Quite a few. Was, yeah, I I mean 
you know, 12, 13, 14, I don't know. But my point is, I've never heard them um, take that for granted or um, think more highly of themselves because of it or not work harder um, because, you know, even games that were quote unquote easier, um, they would prep as if it was uh, a game that, that was not decided and that anything could happen. They also always were very um, humble. Uh, every single player knew their place. There was no, no one was speaking behind anyone's back ever. Um, all the tournaments that I've done with them leading to nationals, and there was never anything um, apart from just amazing team spirit and, and just that, that, um, that fire, like they just want to win so bad and they're so focused, but in a very, very positive way. Um, and everyone is included in that. And that's hard to say, because I mean, I knew I wasn't going to play much when I um, came with them. And even I felt when, when we won that year and it was like the best feeling in the world. And for the team to have made me feel like I was part of the team enough to really feel like we all worked for it was just so special. Uh, the coaching staff was just amazing. Eric at the time was, he was just so, I don't know, just so focused and so ready. You just felt um, safe. Like he was going to find a way. And so you felt safe in your environment and your players and who you were playing with. Um, and you could talk to anybody on the team. Everyone was so welcoming. It was just something else. It is the one team, and I've played with so many different teams at this point. It's the one thing that I just wish or hope to re to re-experience one day because it it was it was really extraordinary. And they were um, inducted, I think, last year into yes. the Hall of Fame. Yeah, so um, so was Eric, obviously, uh, yeah. and they deserve nothing less. You know, it's the players that are still playing now are still so dominant. Um, it's kind of crazy. I was last weekend, uh, we were playing at the same tournament and I was with the Couture sisters. All three of them still play for Timis. Um, and Lynn said, you know, when I won't be able to follow all the youngsters, you know, I'll, I'll stop. And I'm like, well, we're in it for the long haul because like you're obviously not going to stop anytime soon. Right. Like they are <laughs> so good. They're just so yeah. good. And, and, you know, Kat and they're is just the same. as passionate as everybody else. Right. Like, and all of their sports were kind of kidding because they're doing all these things outside of broomball. They're running a lot. They're doing like trail hikes, whatever it is. They're in such great shape. Um, and Lynn and Mike have had kids. Uh, Milou is a busy uh, teacher. Like they're so busy and they've made it a priority to just be at the top of their game. I, I, I'm just in awe of the people that they are. Uh, they're just really good people. And that really translates in the long run because it's not just about talent. I think it's about who you are as a person and in the dressing room. Um, and that just sticks with me. I just really hope to experience that one day again, because that's really special. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, Chloe, what message would you have for the women out there who are expecting a baby and are super worried about coming back from that and playing broomball and hoping to have careers again? Now I know your your story. We've heard it lots, and, <laughs> and I get it. But I mean, I don't. Um, how can I say this? Like, I don't think you're done, Chloe. Like, there's no way. There's no way. I don't think I'm done either, and that's fine. No. Honestly, I'm, and and that's. I guess that's my message. You know, um, and that's why I wanted to be transparent and open about everything that has happened since I became a mom because it wasn't an easy journey it wasn't one that I was expecting um and that's the point 
you will do it regardless of the how and the, what you need to, to figure out whether it's, you know, how, um, how you're going to do it physically, because maybe your birth wasn't what you were expecting, or it's taking longer, or you have an injury, whatever it may be. Don't try to overthink it beforehand, because if there's one thing that I guess I learned is that I thought it was going to go one way and it didn't, and it's okay. You know what I mean? So don't try to prep too much for the after, which doesn't mean do take care of yourself and eat your vegetables and your protein and go to bed early and work out and do all that good stuff. Um, I know that that has helped me a lot, to be honest, like be, especially the first time around, second time around, when you already have a toddler, different, different stuff uh, to, to deal with. But take care of yourself the best that you can to just be just be proud of who you are. Like, just be happy with where you're at. You cannot control anything else. So I wouldn't stress over anything. Um, whatever, it's so cheesy to say whatever will happen, you know, whatever is meant to be will be is, is the cheesiest thing. But I kind of do believe it. Like, put the right energy out there and focus on yourself. Instead of focusing on, your team and your spot and what you were good at spoken or be happy focus on yourself be move like move your body be happy to move your body the rest will absolutely follow there that's that's one guarantee awesome nicole um i Anything think that different? Like, <laughs> <laughs> i think the the biggest message is um is like kind of similar to Chloe, just um, be the best self you can be. And, and knowing that that might not be who you were when you were 19, 20. Um, my body shape and figure and everything in my life is not the same as it was when I was playing my juvenile years, playing my most competitive years. Um, but where I'm at right now is, is still great. I'm so beyond like mind blowing how what your body can go through as a mom to know that you can carry a little human and, and have quite a baby bum going and honestly go through a lot of the mental stresses of that body changing I, I can attest to the very first pregnancy that I had I I struggled with this a lot um knowing like my, I might never fit into the pair of pants I used to wear um knowing my Room ball equipment might be a little tight, which it was when I first came back. And knowing that that is okay, knowing I might have to size up a pair of broom ball pants, that is okay. Um, it's your new reality. And at the end of the day, the main thing that matters is you got out, you did something physical for yourself, which is so good for your mental health. You don't really realize it, how much you actually need it until you, you put yourself in that position. And Coming back from the pregnancies, um, the very first game, I kind of always dreaded it. And then I played it and I was like, why was I even overthinking this? Like, it was the best thing I needed for my own mental health, for my own physical health. And, uh, and I was proud of myself. Like, having two children and being able to still play the sport I love and still, like, I'm very fortunate, still at a competitive level is, is great. And, and not everyone will have the same story as I do. Um, they'll all have their own stories, but I hope it doesn't uh, discourage moms from playing um, because this sport is is so good for moms uh, because it it doesn't have it. You can take yourself away from that competitive style and still play it and still love it. Um, it can just be simply playing in a league, a, a pickup league. It doesn't have to be the highest level it, it used to be for you. That was a phase. Um, and just remember to be grateful for those phases and those times you did have and knowing that it still has made you who you are. And really people still might look up to you. You don't really know. Um, I feel like as a mom, that's kind of your, my new mindset is like, okay, I'm going to be that mom that everyone wants to try and, and achieve the, the things that I've been very grateful to achieve. So trying to be a little bit of a leader that way and a role model to know that like having kids, isn't going to stop you from playing sports. And, and at the end of the day, realistically, like it's your little people who love you and they look up to you and they don't care uh, what you do, but they'll be happy to know that you're doing something for you. And, and they get excited when I say broom ball, it's cool to see Nova go broom ball, broom ball. She just wants to go to the arena and she knows where we're going. And, and that's the greatest joy 
as a mom that anyone can have is, is having, seeing the joy that it brings to your own kids, even just going to the arena to watch and knowing that their mom's on the ice or, or their aunt's on the ice or their dad's on the ice. And they just want to wave at them. It's like, as a mom, it's the coolest feeling too, to be like, there's my little one watching me play, which some might have never even thought that that would be a thing. Once you, people think once they have kids, their lives it's are over. over. Yeah. But it, it's really up to you. It's your choice. It is manageable. It is doable. It's all about finding the balance, find, finding the right support system, and believing in yourself and giving yourself that space to do something for you, which is so and important. The community is there. Nicole mentioned it. You know, it, that's something you will find everywhere, I'm sure. You know, we're all moms. We all get it. We all watch after each other's kids. We all just know, like, oh, this is this person's kid. Like, even if I don't. <laughs> know her 100% you know like you're keeping an eye all the time um and we can relate so you're never alone we get it don't put barrier barriers that may not even exist you know like you're not alone in this um and you can definitely take the hour to go play and and take that time for your for your mental health and your body to move because you're you're never alone so I agree well Ladies, that's been fantastic. Um, you've shared so much. It's been absolutely wonderful. This is probably one of the longest podcasts we've ever had. I'm <laughs> we not just like lie. to talk, I guess. <laughs> uh, you know what, though? It's intriguing. It was probably one of my favorite. I'm not even going to lie to you. It's been one of my favorites. And Cam missed it. Thank God. Like, I'm so glad. <laughs> Sorry, so glad. Cam. <laughs> No, I'm not glad. I'm, I wish he was here, but it, it's it sucks. He he had to sit and watch the Senators lose tonight, and that that's fine. <laughs> that's it's what they're used to. Are you but, just upset because you don't have a professional hockey? <laughs> I was waiting for that. Your, your no. What do you mean? We got the Riders. They're winners. <laughs> but I'm sorry. Who? <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah. And I'm not even a sense person at all. I'm yeah. not a sense fan, but I'm yeah. just saying no. at least, you know. Yeah, at least there's someone to go watch. <laughs> I, I, I have to drive five hours to go watch the Jets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the token question that we always end it with, ladies, okay, what is your best broomball memory? I know that we've probably heard a few tonight, quite a few. And I know there's probably not just one because I tell you what. I have so many, and it's hard to narrow down just one. I've shared a few. Um, there's many more that I probably could share, but Chloe, we're going to start with you. What is your best broomball memory? Like, I know, is there one thing that just stands out above all others? Like, anything. So definitely, uh, I'm, that's such a cliche, but my it last, um, it, it, it really is, but my last juvenile nationals um, will stick with me just forever because it was my first and only one with the Dynamite at the juvenile level. We had just built the team at the beginning of the season, decided to go and compete. Um, even though we hadn't, you know, known each other for a long time. Uh, and just wearing that logo at the front of my jersey that we have decided as a team who we were going to be and what that was going to look like. Um, instead of being a follower, um, you know, I was for the first time a, a leader. Um, I was the leader of that team. And it showed me... Um, a side that I didn't know of myself. So it wasn't as much about, you know, the competition itself, but I, I trusted myself. I I'm someone who is um, a very low um, self-esteem at times. And so knowing that, Hey, um, you know, you decided you had this idea, you decided to bring people together um, to be the leader for this group. And we ended up going I had so much fun playing, ended up on one of the all-stars team, which I was just at the cherry on top. Honestly, I did, I, it's once again, sounds really cheesy, but I don't care as much about like all the individual stuff. I really just winning stuff as a team. There's no other feeling. Um, 
And having brought this group together and playing with some of them still today, 12 years later, what else do you want? You know, what more would you want to end your juvenile years? Um, so that was just the most special time for me, really, it was 2011. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. That sounds fantastic. Nicole? This is tough. Like, very tough. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, I, I've narrowed it down to two. Can I share both? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You betcha. You betcha. Um, my, my very, like, probably my, my top one would be our very first time qualifying for nationals. Um, we were that Terminator team that didn't have any matched attire at all. We didn't really know what nationals were until our coach said, well, you've made it this far. If you win this next game, you're going to go to nationals. Or I don't even think he told us, to be honest. I think we played against Seaway Devils in the finals. and Or he might have told us. And we lost that game. But we were all cheering louder than Seaway Devils for that game because we knew we were going to nationals. We were bawling on the ice. Our parents were crying in the change room with us. It was such a, a powerful moment to know that these random people from Palmerston <laughs> had qualified for nationals. We had no we... idea who you were. We had no <laughs> idea when we saw the name. Like, who are, what's that team? Who is Where this? Coming from? <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> And it's, it's pretty cool to like kind of know that that kind of has paved the path for Terminators because I think almost since then, they've almost qualified every year, um, which is pretty neat. If not them, it's been our mild May team. So it's pretty cool to know that we kind of were like the, the one, the first stepping stone of many, many journeys for that. And my second biggest memory and highlight would be... Um, winning provincials with OSS playing with my my three sisters and my two cousins it was just uh and having my parents in the stands it's it doesn't get much better than that um I am very 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 blessed to have this as a family thing um and grateful for my parents to support us I still don't think they miss a game and I'm going <laughs> to be 32 this week so it's like they don't really miss anything yet to this day um so without them and without my sisters I don't think I I would be where I'm at in this game. I probably actually would have quit many years ago. Um, so every memory with them is incredible. And every memory from a nationals, provincials that has led me to meet new people and travel to new places in, in Canada is, is simply the best. And I think that's one thing that's so unique about this sport is that we have that ability to compete at a national level and be able to see the province all at the same time. Um, yeah, that's, we're so fortunate that way with Rumble. And I don't think people realize that that's where you can end up um, with this sport. So yeah, that's kind of my little memory. And, and it's been, this will be a new highlight because I competed against Chloe often. And when I heard that I was going to be on here with you and I told my sisters, they were like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so it's pretty neat. Um, this is going to be added to my list of memories. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so many good ones. It's really fun. Thanks. Yeah. I now that I know how many of you there are, um, <laughs> for a fact, I am set. I can now cheer for you guys and uh and, be ready for it. <laughs> and awesome. I'm excited to hopefully face you one day with your new team who's gonna compete at intermediate and qualify and qualify and then go Who to knows? when we're there. <laughs> Who knows? Because we'll we're see. not quite there yet with our spades, but I'm determined we will get there one day with our team so <laughs> I'm excited for you guys honestly I'm rooting for you I, it's a great story I really love it I'm I'll definitely be on the lookout for for you guys it's really fun it's awesome Thanks. that's nice to hear I appreciate that it's been a, quite a journey honestly hey. <laughs> thank you guys again so much for your time tonight and your memories and what you've shared and your sacrifices and all the hardships and everything that's gone into it and your passion. I want to thank you mostly for your passion, both of you. Without without that, our sport wouldn't survive. And we need we we need to keep it going. We really do. So thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. We want to keep this sport alive. I am I am also very passionate about this sport. I have got to travel, like you said, Nicole, this country. I haven't played in, in two provinces. That's it. There's only two provinces in this country I've not got to play in yet. 
and maybe someday I know I'll never get to play in them, but maybe I'll make it there. So make it there coaching or, or being a part of, of the CBF like I am now. It's, it, it's, it, it's going to be a great, a great adventure for myself as well. So thank you again for your time. Thank you so much for your stories. It was wonderful. I honestly had an absolute pleasure with this podcast and um, Cam, suck it. Like, suck it. <laughs> you missed a good one, buddy. All right. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Have a wonderful rest of your evening and uh, maybe see you around the rink at Nationals. For sure. Yeah. For thank sure. you so much, Chad. Right. Thanks, Chloe, thank for you. being my guys. partner for this. Right. <laughs> Anytime. Good night, guys. Motherhood. See you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> awesome. All right. Have a see good evening. Bye. Bye.